Hi, I'm Sally Lakshmi Thurley. I've just been on the online prosperity show and I'm talking today about spirituality and how it can actually be the edge that you need in your business and how the path of enlightenment is actually the same as a path of entrepreneurship. So I hope you enjoy and I look forward to hearing all your feedback. Thank you. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today we've got the she monk herself. Sally, how are you doing, my love? Prosper, I'm awesome. Thank you very much for having me here. Understandable. Now, viewers, if you're watching this show, you would know that every single time we're always bringing you people that are doing their stuff, honing their craft, and especially experts in their own field. Now, you might be an entrepreneur who's spent years trying to hone your craft and you're working on your personal development, but you still haven't dedicated time to looking within from a spiritual perspective as much. And that might be something that is, you know, um, stopping or crippling your success. And that's the reason why we talk to people like Sally who've been through it all and are willing to be teaching you to get connected to your true self so that you can actually start having a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Now, Sally, did I say any of that right? You got the whole lot right. That is totally correct. <laughs> Understandable. Now, Sally, tell us a little bit about what you do and how it actually helps people that are in a business space. Yeah. Well, I love entrepreneurs. I am an entrepreneur. And I think those of us who do well are archetypal entrepreneurs. We can't not do it. It's something that eventually life is going to kind of force us into that area. But I'm also a spiritual teacher who spent 20 years studying spiritual philosophy in an ashram. And when I came out, I realized that the path of enlightenment is exactly the same as the path of entrepreneurship. And if only people realize, if I, I, I look at entrepreneurs and I just, I, if they just knew how close they were and that they can get off this attitude, like, even though we move to entrepreneurship, we move to freedom and all that kind of stuff, we end up doing just the same stuff that we were doing in our jobs. So we end up working harder. We end up just as stressed and all these things enter the space. But when you realize that it's just a path of learning who you are, it's actually an undoing, it's an uncovering, it's an allowing yourself to come from the heart, allowing yourself to work with spirit, where spirit or great universe is the boss then you find yourself clicking into a groove where you're working but not working, where you don't have to push anymore, where your open heart space magnetically attracts the people that you want to work with. So there's such there's a lot of bonus to, to treating your entrepreneurial journey as a spiritual path. Understandable. Thank you so much. You do mention and raise a valid point that the path of successful entrepreneurship is really the same path, um, you know, as, um, as an enlightenment. And, you know, in the process, why not do both? Okay, so that's an, an absolutely a valid point there. Now, let's just, you know, get back a little bit, you know, just so that everybody else is on the same page here. What would you constitute or define enlightenment as? Great question. Thank you for asking me that because there's so much bullshit around what enlightenment is. But basically, you, are, you know who you are. Enlightenment is when you, you've gone to the point where you've, you've, let, you've been so present, you've left the ego, you've left everything you know is true, you've, you've completely undone yourself until you realise the truth of who you are. So enlightenment, really, you've gone home. And we are on this planet to go home. We are evolving as, uh, you know, you can call them us transmigratory beings. We're taking on different lifetimes and different roles purely to, to reunite with our true self. Understandable. Now, when you are in alignment with your true self, you now serve from a position of why. And people literally don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it, all right? That's so correct. that totally then correct. puts you in the driver's seat to your success. Now, our essential nature really calls us to be in a loving place, um, you know, in the world. And But life, work, business sort of takes, away, uh, takes us away from our spiritual uh, nature. How then can you help people 
um, find that balance or find that alignment? I, ha- I tell them it's okay to be crushed by life. If we're so busy defending ourselves. We're so busy protecting ourselves. But number one is we need to allow ourselves to be crushed. We need to allow ourselves to become humble. We need to allow ourselves to be wrong. Little things like that mean that every time something in the world happens to us, it's actually a teaching experience. So for someone like me who ended up uh, going away to a monastery and doing that level of work, that's why I call myself the she-monk because I came back out into the world and I saw there is, what's the point? What is the point of, you know, spiritual people wandering off into caves or monasteries or jungles or something like that when actually there's just as much meat in the world, if not more? So traditionally it always used to be you went into a monastery or you went to the world. So there was become a monk or a priest or you become what's called a householder. But what I've discovered is actually also true of ancient times before we even came up with the concept of monks and things is that the world is set up as the most brilliant training ground to have to make us face ourselves, know who we are, learn self-awareness, keep our heart open, use wisdom, become of service to humanity. And that's what we're here to be. We're here to learn to be wise. We're here to learn to love. And we're here to take those as our service to humanity, which can be our entrepreneurial venture. Understandable. And that also then brings about your whole uniqueness, making it easier for your customers to actually differentiate you in the market. So it's not all, um, you know, esoteric or airy-fairy. It actually does help your bottom line, you know, because because yeah. if you would understand, Sally, I'm also really trying to make it real um, with everybody else that's, um, you know, in the audience and really trying to make sense um, of what we're talking about. Now, can you define to me, you did mention something that goes along the lines of clarity and how that is of essence in whatever you touch as a person or as an entrepreneur clarity yes um well clarity mean clarity means alignment basically so clarity means that you've got yourself operating out of your head because the head is where all our mistakes and errors come from and it means that you're operating from your heart space and it means that you have you've got blinkers on to peripheral vision like you're in you're in action and you're doing and we know that things unfold as you're in action so you can imagine if you if there's a technique i use called self-inquiry it's an ancient wisdom technique and as you're on the go you can ask yourself very very intelligent and um uncovering questions so in the moment you can know this not that and you start to build up a strong muscle of intuition and you start to know just by the the feeling space that I don't need to be doing this and you just shut it down. I need to be investigating into this further. You just, and you just move into that. So it becomes extremely simple time saving. Um, And your clarity means that everyone else, your staff have clarity. So you're spending less time having to explain yourself. Um, You also have peace of mind because as you go, you're just, you're not looking behind anymore. You're just knocking things off. Keep moving forward. Understandable. You did also mention uh, in that last answer of yours, stuff, and that constitutes relationships. How then does that sort of you knowing who you are affect the relationships of people that are around you or, you know, help them or deter them in, in, in so to say? They love you. <laughs> they just love you. They're inspired. You being who you are is you being your why. So again, it's not something you have to constantly explain. You're living it. It's all about your being. So then your staff are encouraged and inspired by you all the time. And it also creates a space for them to want to be that, for them to want to be their best self, for them to want to start asking good questions and start to want to do the practice. Understandable. A lot of the uh, people that are probably watching this show right now, they've probably reached a lot of milestones. They've achieved quite a lot professionally, but they still feel like maybe their personal life is off balance or things are just crumbling beneath them. And it being a Monday today and almost the the end of the month, you know, bills, invoices, and they burn out. Now, and, 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 and then they also get tired. How do you sort of help people get out of that humdrum um, of their life? They're my favorite people. 
and, and they're the people I serve the most. And, and it's funny at the moment, it's, it's actually corporates and executives. So I go in and help um, entrepreneurs, but it's the corporates and executives at the moment who are really relating to that because they are completely, they just have lost the soul for what they're doing. They are burnt out. You know, they don't, at least with entrepreneurs, you're living your passion. And that should just be doing it alone. If you're really, really wide into what you're doing, who you're serving and what you're doing it for and all that kind of stuff, you'll want to wake up on Monday morning and get started as soon as possible. Um, but the ones that don't, it just means I have to go in and work with them. I usually take them away and retreat. They come away with me for five days. We do a lot of soul searching. I've had this, my, my last retreat was full of corporates and entrepreneurs and each and every single one of them found a new why. You've got to find the new why. Um, you're, you're, you don't, you haven't spent the time to work out what matters to you most. What does your soul want to do? What does your heart want to do? Um, are you really still serving the right people? Like, so things have gone off balance. And, um, and also, if the relationships are out, there's usually a time thing. That they, you, it's, relationships take quality time. They take effort. Um, there's no difference between working with a relationship and building your business. They both require your attention. So, um, yeah, just looking at what people's values are, all those sorts of things. So I spend a lot of time with them and then pack them up and send them back out into the world. <laughs> Loving Mondays. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff. You did touch upon uh, something of interest um, to me there. Uh, you mentioned values, okay? Mm. Um how you align your life with your business, the people that you're around should exactly, you know, correspond or be consistent. All right. Now as entrepreneurs, we have this conundrum of having to be online all the time. All right. And maybe your online persona um, ha has to, you know, put out a, maybe a fake or, some sort of an appearance keeping up with the joneses just so that you appear as if your life is perfect while you're not living an authentic life how do you think this balance is affecting um you know people entrepreneurs especially well that's an inauthenticity to me that's an inauthenticity so to me um if you want to have longevity in this game you have to be yourself and you have to be unique and you have to stand out from the crowd and i i have a great um, methodology that I created myself and it's it's all about high, finding your highest one I use ancient spiritual principles but I've managed to find a method that's modern and if we're all here to go home our highest values are all qualities of the divine so what are the qualities of the divine they are love they are joy they are happiness, they are wisdom, they are well-being, they are all these things, they're prosperity, abundance. So um, that's what you align with. So if I'm, you got to get to a point where everything has to be the one. There's no separation. It's when we're in separation and thinking I'm separate from this, I have to be that, that, you know, we start getting stuck in our heads and things become a bit of a grind. We start to compare with other people. But if we're coming, so my highest value is love. So all that matters to me is that I, before I speak, like before I speak to you, it's I connect to the things that make me feel love. And then I'm here out of love to serve entrepreneurs. I love entrepreneurs. So all that, I don't think, I don't give it a second thought about how I'm going to appear, what I have to be like. All that matters to me is that I feel loving and I'm loving you, which is easy because you're lovely. And I love what I'm talking about. So it's like, that's, that's it. So you, you, you cling to, you look at all the time, you allow it to pull you along what it is your, your heart values most. Understandable. That's, that's a pretty easy thing to be. And I would think that um, you need to cultivate a few habits in order for you to get oh, yeah. into that place because humans are oh, creatures yeah. of habit. And whatever we do, like you've just mentioned, you just getting up and putting yourself in a place of love, some people cannot easily Correct. do that. All right. Correct. So is there anything that maybe you can suggest, you know, habitual that people can maybe start doing just so they can revert back to who they are and start, uh, um, you know, harvesting a bit of personal love within themselves? Meditate. Meditate. Have gratitude. Love the people around you. Appreciate where you are. 
accept everything as it is and don't want to change it. We spend most of our time pushing our moment-to-moment -moment situation away. We'd rather not be here. You know, they, they, as Tony Robbins says, as human beings, we're always looking for pleasure and moving away from pain. But if, from a spiritual perspective, there's nothing wrong. There's never anything wrong. We have to just sit in the moment and be okay with us, with the moment, with everything as it is. And the other thing is it's all, it's, it's all boils down to just dealing with the ego. So when you dismantle its impact on you, then you start to become softer and more vulnerable and squishier and warmer and all these things. Yeah, they take practice because we're on guard all the time. And as entrepreneurs, we think we have to have a mask or a presence or something like that. So it, take, it takes time. You need to work with someone like me. Like, you know, need to work with a spiritual mentor and know what practices are suitable for you because everyone's all so different. Like mindfulness doesn't always work for a lot of um, entrepreneurs. They're better off using more transcendental kind of practices. So find a meditation that works for you and begin your day opening up to that beautiful space and you'll have that chance, a better chance to start your day on the right track. Understandable. So obviously the people in the audience right now watching this, you're probably just hanging on to your phone and uh, sitting at the edge of your seat, really, um, you know, wondering how you can get a hold of Sally. You probably have started to realize that there's got to be more in your life that, you know, than what you're doing right now or what you are actually capable of. And you probably are ready to embrace, you know, up to the next phase of your life by doing something more meaningful and more soul aligned and you just than more than just trying to make money. I mean, I know the show is about helping you um, have a business that's profitable and enjoyable, but if you are not enjoying what you're doing, then obviously what good is it? Now, Sally, that person who's sitting out there, um, you know, watching us on their mobile phone or on the big screen and sitting at the edge of their seat, how can they actually get a hold of you so that you can help them, um, you know, start having a meaningful and soul aligned um, you know, business life or relationships? Great. Well, you can email me at info at uh, I do have a website, uh, which is sellythurley.com. And of course, I've got Enlightenment for Entrepreneurs, which is my group on Facebook. So you can come over there and um, just send me a message as well. I'll personally get back to you as soon as I can. Understandable. Well, Sally, I can't thank you enough for your knowledge, your expertise and your time this morning um, and your, you know, the way you've just presented this subject in a very fun way. It's just like money. It's like sex. It's like uh, nutrition. Not a lot of spiritual talk out there and if somebody's True. talking about it, they pretty much don't know what they're saying. So True. you're in that conundrum. <laughs> Um, and you know, you really wanting to explore your spiritual path and get some sort of direction of where you want to go spiritually. I recommend that you get a hold of, uh, Sally. I'll be putting in all the uh, details of her website right at the bottom of this, uh, show. And, um, if you haven't subscribed to this, uh, program as yet, be on the lookout for experts like Sally that just come in and give, give, give of all that they've learned. It's taken her over 20 years for her to sit for 20 minutes with us here. So it does take a while for you to get to that level of being able to give. So thank you so much, Sally, yet again um, for your time awesome. today. Awesome. Thank you so much. Loved it. Bye for now. All right, that boot camp you just did, I don't think you needed it. Boot camp? Yeah. The, the oh. <laughs> Maybe it helped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> a, lo a lot of people don't know how to say their, um, I'm just going to take this off.